This particular case comes straight out of Jacksonville, Florida and has so many details involved. And the evidence that was placed on display at trial in this case was beyond damning and difficult to listen to. And I'm going to walk you through the details and cover as much as I can to give you all a clear picture of what happened to 16 year old Ayanna Sawyer. So this story begins with Ayanna's aunt, Naomi Mobley. Naomi was in a position to help out other family members. She was in a successful marriage to her husband, Jonathan Quiles. She had a stable household. She was financially secure. And so it was commonplace for other family members to stay at Naomi's house periodically throughout the year. Two people in particular that would stay over often at the Mobley home were Ayanna Sawyer and her sister who for the sake of anonymity is only ever referred to as SS in this case. Repeatedly throughout the trial she is only ever referred to as SS and while multiple witnesses and persons of interest appeared on camera throughout this trial Ayanna's sister SS was never shown. Again they wanted to protect her identity considering the harshness and disgusting nature of this case and i also believe that she was underage at the time of this trial now that's not confirmed that's just what i believe but because the authorities family and investigators decided to try and keep the identity of ss a secret i will also do my part in trying to protect this young lady so i too will only refer to ayana's sister as SS in this video so when you hear it you'll know that's who I am referring to okay so we have Ayana and her sister staying with their aunt Naomi and you know how it is when you begin to get older you tend to want to grow up faster than you should right especially young ladies these days it seems like they're in a rush to grow up and be adults and so the relationship between the sisters and the rest of the Mobley family was pretty close and when you're close to someone, you can usually tell when they're not acting like themselves or when something isn't quite right with them. And in the summer of 2018 is when these things would start to come to the surface about what was really going on behind closed doors in Naomi's home and under her roof. The family would come to learn that 16-year-old Ayana, who's been acting strange lately, is pregnant and Ayana's sister and family at the time are aware of a nearby neighbor who stayed across the street from them who previously had a sexual history with Ayana. In fact, that same neighbor had been arrested and charged with sexual battery due to him being an adult male and Ayana being underaged. That man's name is Kamara Humphrey. So naturally, all fingers began to point at Mr. Humphrey as being the baby's father. But what the family does not know is that SS has been holding a secret. SS knows exactly who the father is, but she doesn't say a word. And so the rest of Ayana's family, including her grandmother, begin to really dig in and press her on who the father of her baby is. But Ayana says that she doesn't want to talk about it. Anytime the subject is broached, she completely disregards it and just refuses to talk about it at all. Now, intuition is a peculiar concept because it's not something that can be physically seen or measured. You can't quantify or analyze the properties of intuition like a science project. Intuition just is, right? And if we looked up the exact definition of intuition, it would read as the ability to understand something immediately without the need for conscious reasoning, which when you think about it, in theory is a powerful thought provoking concept it's like a superpower or at the very least a sixth sense and it is another one of Ayana's aunties whose name is Jametta Mobley who develops that intuition about Ayana and the mystery father and she activates detective mode now for all the women listening 
you all know that when it comes to figuring something out and uncovering secrets, you all are some of the best unpaid freelance detectives in the game. There is nothing like a woman who has a scent that something isn't right. She turns into a hound dog and she is going to get to the bottom of whatever it is that is going on. And men, you know it too, because some of you, unfortunately, have been on the other end of that mystery. So you know all too well the capabilities of women when they get into detective mode. So this auntie goes into detective mode and she starts investigating and paying close attention to her sister Naomi's household and what's going on because Ayana is not forthcoming with information. In fact, she's starting to close herself off from the family entirely in regards to her baby. But Jametta Mobley has this intuition and she is about to drop a bombshell on the entire family that would change the Mobley household forever. You said that uh, on direct examination, you didn't like the way he looked at her. Yes. And you describe that as, you know, hey, I know what a man looks like, a woman, looks at a woman like, right? Yes. Okay. Outside of that, you know, I just didn't like the way he looked at her. Did you ever actually see anything inappropriate between I.S. and Jonathan Quillis? Outside of his looks? No. Okay. Did you ever see um, any behavior between the two of them that would indicate that there was any sort of sexual relationship going on? The way he looked at her, my opinion, yes. I did only look at you. That's how he looked at her. Now I'm going to look at you. How you doing, sir? He didn't look at her like, a, how you doing, sir? He looked at her like a man look at a woman. Okay. And outside of that, you never saw anything that would indicate any sort of sexual relationship between the two of them? No. Okay. And you were never confided in by IS or anybody else about there ever being any such sexual relationship between IS and Jonathan Quillis? We had our own... We had our own... Uh, I didn't speak to IS, no. But, you know, me and my sisters had our own separate... Yes. Okay. Outside of the accusations that you s talked about that, you know, between your sisters and you, there was no other information that you ever received that there was a sexual relationship going on between IS and Jonathan Quillis, correct? Correct. Okay. You talked about the accusation itself. You said you were the one who made the accusation originally. Is that true? Yes. Okay. And you said that you did that when you found out that she was pregnant. Yes. Is it true that you actually made a similar type of accusation when the Kamar Humphrey situation occurred? I need you to be a little more specific. Okay, let me go question. back. Do you know who Kamar Humphrey is? I've never seen him before. I've, I've heard of him, and I know that he used to stay across the street from my sister Kim. Have I ever seen him? Could I pick him out in the lineup? No. Okay. Are you aware of a sexual battery that Kamar Humphrey committed against IS? Yes. Okay. And were you aware of that at the time it happened? I, I went to the house and I, I did speak to IS about that. And did she tell you that that's what happened? Uh, yeah, we talked. Do you want to know what we talked about? Or no, no, hearsay? no. No, yeah, I don't need you to tell me specifically. Okay, yeah. Okay. As far as that time period when Kamar Humphrey sexually battered IS. At that point in time, were there accusations of a sexual relationship made between IS and Jonathan Quillis? Before that time? Around that time period, yes. Around that time? I'm gonna say between the sisters. And when I say my, we didn't, speak on a text message, I've always, if, every time I see anything, I, I've always said something, but. Okay, as far as that, those accusations that were from earlier on in 2018, did you ever speak to IS about that and ask her about those accusations? For which, which one? Did you ever ask IS to confirm or deny 
sexual relationship, uh, any sort of sexual relationship with Jonathan Quillis. She wouldn't tell us about anything. Only the only reason why I honestly feel like we found out is because she got caught with uh, the Kumar. Uh -huh. Yeah, but no, only other thing I tried to get out of her, we were trying to find out who the father of her child was, but she wouldn't say anything. So I know that these accusations had been going on for some time back in early 2018, and then again when she got pregnant. At any point in time, did IS ever confirm a sexual relationship between herself and Jonathan Quillis? No. All right, let me ask you about... Um, where she would go, because that was stated multiple times. You named three places, originally, you named three places. You named Kimberly Mobley's house, her own house. Yes. You named Jonathan and Naomi's house. Yes. And you said that uh, she had stayed at her grandma's over the summer. Yes. Then later you said, it's not just those three places, it's actually, you know, other family members too, because sometimes she'd stay at Paula's house, correct? We would go to, we would go over there. Is that, we would go, would she go to Paula House? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, and other family members' houses as well. She would go over to their homes as well. It's normally when we had functions, but for the most part, she was either home, like doing, like staying the night, stay at my house, the night at my house. No, I don't remember her staying the night at my sister's house. The only place that she stayed for an extended period of time was either at her house or Naomi and Jonathan's house at that time. Okay, or her grandmother in Georgia. Or her grandma, but that was for the summertime. Right, understood. As far as Kamar Humphrey, did you know that IS was going over to Kamar Humphrey's house? At first, no, I didn't. I found out about him after she got caught. After, after she got caught with him? Yes. Okay, got that's, you. That's, outside of that, I wouldn't even know his name. Okay. And so if she hadn't got caught, you wouldn't have even known that she was going over to Kamar Humphrey's house on a regular basis? I don't know if she was going on a regular basis. Okay, or that she'd been over there? If I, if she didn't get caught, I wouldn't have known, no. So is it fair to say that although those three places you mentioned, it's very possible that she could have been going other places as well that you weren't aware of? No, Mars, he stayed across the street. So she didn't have a she didn't have a car. So where would she go? She went to let me stop. You mean Kamar was close in proximity, so that was easy yes, for her to get. Yes, it was get. just across. It was just across the street. Outside of that, where would she go? Because if we, she did go somewhere, we would know because her mama would say something. All right. You agree though that you didn't know about that beforehand, so you wouldn't have been able to tell us that if she had not been caught. About her going across the street. Correct. No, I wouldn't. No one would know. And so, again, it's fair to say that if she were going other places on foot, you wouldn't be able to tell us if she was or wasn't. Well, she gonna, I don't know where else she would go. Jametta tells her sister Naomi that she believes her very own husband, Jonathan, is the father of his niece's unborn child. And at first, of course, naturally, there is shock. There is horror. There is disbelief from Naomi because she's like, my husband? No way, that's, that's insane, that's impossible. And so naturally she becomes very angry that she is accusing, that her sister is accusing her husband of being the father, which creates an obvious divide and rift between the sisters and the Mobley family. So Naomi brings these accusations to her husband, Jonathan, and he's like, you know, that's ridiculous. There's no way I can be the father. Me and your niece uh, have nothing going on. Um, there's no way we have a sexual relationship, much less a baby on the way. And see, right at that particular time, Naomi Mobley was also pregnant with child. And this also meant that if these accusations against Jonathan were true, that he got both Ayana pregnant and his wife pregnant around the same time. But not only that, 
It would also mean that he got Ayana pregnant when she was just 15 years old. So the cat's out the bag by now, right? And everyone in the family is trying to figure out how to be there for Ayana. But at the same time, they obviously want to get to the bottom of these accusations. And one thing about your character is that if it's flawed and you haven't worked on developing it for the better, it will betray you. And that's exactly what happens with Jonathan. The more time that passes, the more Naomi begins to think about it and suspect that it could be true. If nothing else, her husband has had opportunity. And by this time that she starts coming around to the idea that her husband could possibly have been the one to get Ayana pregnant, Ayana suddenly comes up missing. No one can find her. So the authorities are actually dispatched to the Mobley home to address this situation head on and search the property for any sign of Ayana because the family has completely turned it up a notch against Jonathan at this point. And when police arrive, Jonathan tells the police that it's the guy who stayed across the street that was trying to place the blame onto him. But when the police arrive to search the property, they don't find anything. Keyless is wearing the bright yellow shirt. He's been told they need to search his house for Sawyer. Keyless expresses shock. My wife just dropped a whole bunch of on me right now. Keyless's wife supports his innocence. In regards to this here, do I think my husband is capable of any of this? No, I don't. You know, but uh, I mean, I don't. We have a missing piece of the puzzle. At the same time, police are searching Keyless's home room by room, and they check the garage and the backyard, but no sign of Sawyer. Keyless waits outside and tells police Sawyer was having a relationship with his neighbor. She ended up having, um, getting bored with the guy next door, and he was a much older dude. And um, they came up with uh, the whole idea that I was the one that turned them out for her. But they don't leave empty handed because Ayana's mother, Kimberly Mobley, arrives at the scene as well. And she has something for the police. She hands them a laptop computer and instructs them on where to find Ayana's personal diary entries. This turns out to be the break in the case that they needed because in those archives of messages and diary notes they discover the inappropriate messages between ayana and jonathan so his mother is also at the scene and her mother seconds. gives police a laptop filled with Sawyer's private journal entries she explains how to find the entries uh, I went there in the recycle bin right here. The recycle bin? Uh-huh, and then she also got other notes over here. Weeks later, those journal entries would reveal an inappropriate relationship so, between Sawyer be and no Keyless. Police take Keyless in for questioning. Now they know it's all true. And now Naomi has to come around to the idea that her own husband has gotten her very own niece pregnant and that he's an abuser and an elite level scumbag. This entire time, while Ayana has been staying with the Mobley family, she's been having an inappropriate relationship with Jonathan Quiles. And this wasn't just a sexual relationship. I'm talking deep conversation, several text messages back and forth. I'm talking a full on relationship. And the next entry? 821, 2018, 322. I don't like nobody hurting you but me. And the next entry? 822, 2018, 1202. I'm sorry, I forgot you're carrying our child and you're oversensitive. I do love you very much and don't want you to keep going through this drama, but we have plans and if you act off of your emotions, you will hinder all of our plans in the future. It, it's very hard to see it now, but it's the truth. And the next entry? 822, 2018, two o'clock. The day Uncle John told you that Maya liked Ken they were already dating and the very next day was the first day that they met up they had sex and then on his birthday they had sex 
And the next entry? 8-22-2018-429. You know what I'm talking about, that you want to play dumb? It's cool. Our whole relationship, all that you lied about to me, all of it, because I know all of the stuff you think I don't. Let's try this again. And the next entry? 8-22-2018-429. Okay, then I pray whenever you get ready to tell me the truth, you will and see how much further we will go. But until then, this is what it is. And the next entry? Uh, okay. Uh, 8-23-2018, 3-13. I lied about not liking Maya and wanting to do things with her. I started the whole thing. I told you that I was only talking to you, but I was also talking to Maya. The only reason we didn't do it more then, more than once was because she found out that we were doing things and she didn't want nothing to do with me. I did kiss her down there once only. That was the same day we did it. I told you things to like me more and when I told you that I wanted you to see our other people, I was lying, percent to see. I talked to my about you and our problems all of the time, percent to see. At first, I told you I was going to give you a baby to keep. I wasn't being serious, but once I seen how happy you were, I decided to give you two once you get older. After I found out about you and the boy, I was going to sex your sister to hurt you like you hurt me, but she didn't want to, so it never happened. I told you I had cameras up in the house. It not true. I know the truth from something else which I'm not going to say. I get info from your mom and aunts about you and tell them things so you won't be with nobody else, percent to see. I said I'm not bothered by your actions anymore, but that's far from the truth. I hate when you are looking at other people, percent to see. I hate when you talk to other people, percent to see. I have your friends, percent to see. Neighbors, I hate that you still talk to that boy. I hate that you talk to other people on your social network, Instagram, Snapchat, and some other things you have, percent to see. I act like I have hacked your phone and I don't know what's going. And the next entry? 823-2018-318. I stopped wanting Maya after she turned me down the last time I got it in my head that it's not going to happen. She said, just laid there, say no, and she was much loose than you, looser than you. Okay, and the next entry? 8-23-2018-10-30. You see what you don't get is I don't give a fuck about what Maya do. I only care about what you do. And like I said in my truth letter to you, uh, I would tell you aunt and mom about things so you... Be careful in your mom. I would tell you aunt and your mom about things so you could only be with me. But you might only read the Maya part and disregard the rest. And the next entry? 8-24-2018-1254. That's how it should be. If Jayco comes at you in a inappropriate way, you should tell me ASAP so I can deal with it right away. And if I question him in front of you, you should be straightforward with it all so he knows you're off limits. And the next entry? 8-25-2018-7-11. And it appears to be another picture. And can you describe what we're looking at? It is another screenshot of a text message from Uncle John. And could you just read the bubbles, please? So, yes. Yeah, text your aunt to love. What's wrong, baby? Snap me. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me. Why are you crying? Hello. Hello. WTF. Yeah, yeah. What happened from when we was talking to now? Are you serious right now? Okay, then, GN, I love you. And then at the bottom, you can make out that it says, I knocked out. And the next entry? 826-2018-1119.
LOL, you will be my best friend. Went, you're pregnant. I'll cook for you until you can't eat no more. In the next entry? 8-27-2018-101. Because I want to take care of you. And the next entry? 8-27-2018-1029. I was on the roof and you told me to see if the chimney was connected to the other apartment so you could talk to that boy. I said, yeah, and you started to make plans to change your school schedule so you can meet up with him and go to a hotel. I started to cry, and then I woke up. And the next entry? 8-28-2018-113. Yeah, I can hear it now. If a fire, ya yeah, yeah, percent to C, where Jaco, percent to C, in my pants, ya yeah, yeah. You want to put it out? I can't. The next entry? 8-28-2018-1229. I'm Nim, being a B. I just want you to be okay, and I want to know where I stand with you, so I'm not just surprised later that you've been with someone else and or you are talking to someone else. That's what I mean. I'd rather you just tell me up front so I can be prepared. And the next entry? 829-2018-1210. I've been kicked down there so many times. So Detective Adam, just take your time, okay? Make sure you're reading word. Yes, word. Just take your time. I've been kicked down there so much, I'm not sure how you even pregnant. How you're even pregnant. How you're even pregnant. Thank you. The next entry? 829-2018-559. It's a picture. And can you describe it, please? It is a screenshot of a photograph of two people having sex, and it says favorite position. And the next entry? 9-2-2018 at 2-0-3. It says, ha ja 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 First off, that boy don't know how to fight, percent to C. Two, I've been fighting all of my life. I can take hits there. I could stand there and let him punch me, and it would have no effect. All of me at all. On me at all. Although I look out of shape, I'm very seasoned. Just two days ago, I beat the shit out of someone. I believe I'm going to be okay. You see, I told him to wait until everyone leaves. Not for me, it's just... It's so when I knock him on his ass, his pride won't be too messed up. The goal is not to defeat him. It's just to teach him to respect his place. And the next entry? 9-3-2018-1151. That's what your slow ass should have said from the f fucking jump. And the next entry? 9-3-2018-11-52. Because it was a simple question that you seem to had a problem answering it. It's cool, though. I'm not going to bother you none. I'll talk to you tomorrow, GN. And the next entry? 9-3-2018-11-52. Oh, so you're not going to fuck him. You'll just wait for me. That's what... Uh, you meant. And the next entry? 9-4-2018-927. I'm very aggravated right now. I'm going to hit you later. And the next entry? 9-7-2018-1221. Yeah, so I need you to be like 100% with me at all times. I'm just so in love with you. I'll kill you and cry. And the next entry? 9-17-2018-134. No, it seems like you the one that wants that, but you don't want to hurt my feelings, so you rather start up your bullshit again so I can leave you. Look, I don't have time for all of your little games. You like to play like I'm stupid and don't see what the fuck is going on. I trust you until you start lying to me again. Just like how all of a sudden you back playing your Sims game full time again 
to the point you don't have time for me no more. I won't be surprised that you don't tilk the next. And they don't end this, the N word? Yes, it's the N word. Okay, go ahead. The same thing you tell me just so you do fuck up. Like the name you keep saying when we fucking, when you about to come and catch yourself. So now everything is coming out. And it turns out that not only has Jonathan been taking advantage of and abusing Ayana, but he's also done the same to her sister, S.S. And S.S. makes it known that she's known about their relationship the entire time, but she did not want to tell anyone because she wanted to protect her sister as well as preserve their sibling relationship. So she was caught between a wall and a hard place. So she kept it all a secret. She kept it all in. But everything would come to a head on December 19th of 20. 18. Ayana, now five months pregnant, leaves out of the house and heads to school. These are still the last images of 15-year-old Ayana Sawyer. Surveillance shows her leaving Terry Parker High School before she vanished December 3rd. Sawyer's uncle, Jonathan Quiles, is in the Duval County Jail on unrelated sexual battery charges, but police say he is a suspect in her pregnancy and disappearance. New details have just been released by the state attorney's office. News for Jack's reporter Janice Harris has been reading through the information. Janice, what have you found? Joy, a lot of information has been found. Keyless is in jail for a sexual battery charge on the missing teens for one of the missing teens relatives. But police also question him about young Sawyer's disappearance. It's January 8th, 2019. Jonathan Quiles sits in an interrogation room wearing work clothes as he waits for detectives. That same day, he was arrested and charged with sexual battery with a minor. That minor is related to missing teen Yana Sawyer. Sawyer is Quiles' niece. Quiles told investigators that he was accused of sexual assault by family members when he told them to stop causing conflict with his wife. Because this is a sister matter type of deal, I can't do it no more. I'm, I'm done with it. He recalls the accusations. That I think uh, Jonathan has been inappropriate with. Mm -hmm. Now, they question them girls mm -hmm. separately, together, and it's been, nope, he's never done, he's never been inappropriate with me. The investigator explains that she is handling a missing persons case. The missing person is Iana Sawyer. They found a love note on her computer. They believe it is about Quilas. And so they're finding stuff on the computer that, that she's authoring mm -hmm. that's implying a sexual relationship with you. Almost like a love affair. The detectives tell Quilas they have also found his DNA, but it's not clear if it's tied to Sawyer or someone else. So there would be no reason to have any of your DNA? Nope. Nope, not at all. Investigators ask Quilas about Sawyer. Quilas explains he doesn't know where Iana Sawyer is located. I have no idea where to find her. Um, she never told me anything about running away. And um, I, 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 I can't, I don't know, I can't give you any information I don't have about her, period. Detectives also asked about Keyless about why he bought a phone, a new phone that is, around the time that Sawyer disappeared, and why he sold his van. Keyless said it was just a coincidence. According to the interrogation video, Sawyer wrote in her diary that Keyless was angry about the pregnancy because she didn't tell him first. Multiple sources have told News for Jack's police have told the family Yana is dead. Her body has not been found, though. Around 12 noon, she goes to lunch, but instead of going to the cafeteria, she's captured on camera, leaving the school completely. A little while later, over at Jonathan's place of work, the ace pick apart, Jonathan is about to go out and leave for lunch as well. So he leaves out in his red minivan and you see him return over an hour later but he doesn't turn into the area where the workers would all usually park he enters through the gate and turns into an off-site area that the company isn't using this area is filled with scrap cars and other types of scrap metal etc jonathan then returns to work after some time he returns to the office and is captured grabbing a roll of red tape. He walks out of the office with a roll of red tape and then he vanishes off camera, again, headed right back into the direction of that secluded vacant area that no one is using. 
After a while longer, he's seen an attractor carrying a car. He stops one of the dump trucks and I'm assuming has a conversation with him. He tells them what we all presume to be a message that he needs to dump something into that truck and it needs to be taken to the scrap pile, which is this huge waste and scrap yard off site. So he dumps that car into the dump truck with the tractor forks and goes back to work. And you're already thinking the unthinkable, uh, and you'd be right. Ayanna Sawyer was inside of that car that Jonathan had taken to the landfill. She had to be inside. Now, it's unclear what exactly transpired over the course of the next 24 hours. Some speculate that he later went to the landfill to make sure he covered his tracks. Others believe he lucked up and was able to maneuver around because he had the right place at the right time to evade being caught in the act. That landfill was searched by several investigators and officers, but it's quite literally like looking for a needle in a haystack. And the only thing that they were able to locate were a textbook from Ayana's high school and a backpack along with some clothing items. But Ayana has never been found. Police have informed the family that although they cannot find her body, they strongly believe that Ayana is dead. Jonathan has maintained his innocence the entire time, from the beginning. But his own brother would testify against him at court, revealing that Jonathan had come to him and confessed that he killed Ayana and got rid of her because she was going to have a baby that would ruin his life and his marriage. According to the testimony, Jonathan told his brother that on that day, on that day that he drove back to work, he had picked Ayana up from school. They had already made previous arrangements. He picked her up somewhere outside of school, drove her back to work to that secluded area where he tried to strangle Ayana to death while they sat in the car, but that it was taking too long and that he couldn't bring himself to see it through. So he shot her in the chest while they sat in an abandoned scrap car after luring her away under the false pretense that they were going to run away together. He was also caught confessing to another inmate on a wire and there was further evidence found that he previously tried to mix drug chemicals together to terminate the pregnancy and have Ayana consume that drug. This guy is the spawn of something vile and evil and he deserves to be put down like a rabid dog. There is a reason we as a society are more lenient on teenagers that are 15 and 16 years old when they commit a crime. It's because at that age, your brain hasn't fully developed to its final form. The thought behind this is that you are not yet equipped with your full range of complete thoughts and rational worldviews. And so for Jonathan Quiles, a grown ass man, to get into not just a sexual relationship, but an emotional, psychological, and mental relationship with a child who hasn't fully developed her thoughts yet, and is therefore open to the predatory nature of other adult men is sickening. Jonathan Quiles had a duty to protect this baby, this child, this underdeveloped mind, but instead he chose to take advantage of it. He chose to leverage this young girl's vulnerability to fulfill a sick desire within himself. And she never stood a chance. Now, I will admit that I don't know too much about being a defense attorney, but what I do know is that there has to be some kind of contract you sign that destroys your soul and human nature, because the things that I've seen these defense teams come up with is beyond sick. Jonathan's attorney not only tried to pin Ayana's disappearance on the neighbor from across the street, but they also came up with the theory that Ayana is still alive somewhere because they never found a body. I can't imagine having to sit there as part of Ayana's close family and listen to the defense gaslight you throughout the entire case. After hours and days of multiple testimonies and hours of evidence being presented, it was time for the jurors to decide Jonathan's fate. Jurors deliberated for just one hour and 13 minutes before returning a verdict of guilty, charging him with two counts of first degree murder. 
One for Ayana and another for the unborn child of five months, as well as guilty of sexual battery assault. The prosecutors sought the death penalty, but a verdict was reached of life in prison and it was accepted by Ayana's family. They said that his death would have given them no solace. They're satisfied knowing that Jonathan Quiles will spend the rest of his natural life in prison. No trace of Ayana Sawyer's body was ever found. Yet we celebrate the vessel that once was anyhow. May the soul of Ayana Sawyer rest in peace.